Hello, my name is Calista Janice, and the title of my speech is called Getting Played by Plagiarism. Calista, I believe there is evidence that some of your results and discussion was plagiarized from a website such as Enter Quizlet URL, where each of the review questions I assigned were answered, and your answers were nearly identical, if not identical, to those of the website. Copying without giving due credit to the source is not acceptable and unethical. Plagiarism violates the UWO Academic Student Conduct Code, enters UWO Academic Student Conduct Code, URL. I have decided to give you a written reprimand as provided for by Group A Sanctions Faculty, which does not allow me to take any disciplinary actions as per Chapter 14 UWS. I advise you to refer to Chapter UWS 14 Student Academic Disciplinary Procedures regarding student academic misconduct, enters UWS Plagiarism Policy URL. You may be wondering, what is this and what is she talking about? Well, this is what Professor John Doe had said to me when I was accused of plagiarism. Plagiarism is mistaken as lazy students just trying to get out of their paper, but that's not always the case. At the beginning of my intro, I quoted what my professor had said to me when I supposedly plagiarized my lab report. Let me tell you, I did not plagiarize, and believe me, I did a lot of research after how angry I was being accused of this. Many of you either most likely think that plagiarism is deceitful and should always be punished, but listen as I explain why many students not do this on purpose and or even want to be punished for this. But sometimes it's taken too far. Plagiarism is not always deceitful or punishable because calculations and patch writing is hard to get away from. Many students are falsely accused of it, and there are many places where we miss citations that go unpunished, yet can be misunderstood. Calication and patch writing is very hard to get away from. According to the book Free Culture by Lawrence Lessig, a Stanford law professor, war words are for formulaic. When many words occur and flow together, creating calications. Because these words are commonly, because these words commonly occur together, it is hard to make them your own. Round of applause is a calication because it is a universal way of saying that the audience has to applaud. You wouldn't say round of cheer because that doesn't flow together. Lessig states that students need to use them in academic writing, meaning that not every verbatim reuse is plagiarism. Patch writing is when writers reuse patterns of words without citing in an attempt to sound like a journalist, a biologist, or a literary theorist, according to Lessig. Many writers patch together texts from different sources using their own choice of words to put the text together. In a journal article called Good and Original, Plagiarism and Patch Writing in Academic Second Language Writing by Diane Bacori, Bacorari that was pre present, presented to the Department of English, Stockholm University. She argues that novice writers need support when writing and that these writers do not fully understand what they're reading, so they can't necessarily give a in your own words explanation. This creates a patch written statement. As a developmental stage, she says that patch writing deserves to be taught, not punished. Along with my story of, of false accusation, other students have dealt with this and schools have paid dearly for it. University of Chicago, Illinois alumni Angela Henderson was falsely accused of plagiarism. According to the website Plagiarism Today in August 2013, Henderson had earned her PhD in nursing from UIC and took a job in December that year as an interim provost for Chicago State University and held that job until 2018. Shortly after Henderson took that job, a now retired CSU history teacher accused her of plagiarism. However, the ind an independent hearing officer cleared her of these allegations, but Henderson was not satisfied. She had filed a lawsuit against UIC for the reason of them improperly discussing the investigation with the media. UIC admitted to no wrongdoings, but agreed to pay nearly $700,000 to Henderson and her attorneys. This amount included potential loss of future earnings, emotional distress, attorney fees, and reputation management services. False accusations can nearly ruin someone's life.
These accusations can hurt someone's career. Many have lost jobs or even opportunities as a result of being falsely accused, according to Boston education lawyer Laura E. Gillis. In response to many lawsuits to universities, these universities should be careful to draw conclusions to cheating or plagiarism, said Robert Holmes, president of Association for Student Conduct Administrators. There are many places we miss these or citations that go unpunished and ignored. Do you remember any of your professors that provided you notes in class with a work cited page at the end of their notes? That's funny, me neither. Many professors do not have their notes cited. Professors using pictures, pictures from the internet without citations. And I do have an example for you. This, these are notes from one of my previous classes. And as you can see, here's the title page. I'm sorry. Um, here is some of the pages and you can see there are no citing. There are a bunch of pictures and also all of these blue lines bring us to um, websites that he does not cite. And that is the end with no work cited. No citing. However, Professor Skip Cheryl Skiba has reminded me of many ways teachers or professors have not plagiarized. And here are some examples she gave me of how she doesn't plagiarize. She was granted permission by previous students to use their work and they, all they ask is that she change their names or they just use it, or she can just use it as is. The university, university created a policy that allows the instructors to use the plagiarism policy in their syllabi due to the academic fair use guidelines. Professor Skiba also used a plagiarism finder to find that 30% at minimum and 50% at maximum of ones used in her syllabi is plagiarized. She says that this occurs because the university's plagiarism statements are often published online and there are some similarities among other institutions. These checkers also do not consider the common knowledge. It is hard to believe that all students are not bad and that they're not all out to cheat, steal, and lie, but it's true. Yeah, we must realize that writers combine their ideas with others in ways that may be calcations and patch writing. Many students are falsely accused of it and we miss many places of plagiarism that goes unpunished yet can be misunderstood. Plagiarism, plagiarism is not always a problem for students, but it can be a good majority of the professionals. So. Who should we really listen to?